Hey, what's up guys, Alex here. Thank you for checking this video. Welcome to another tutorial about Gutenberg. In this lesson, we're going to continue what we started in the previous lesson, meaning we're going to see how to handle the newly uploaded background image that we're adding to our call to action custom block via the media upload element. As usual, at the beginning of every tutorial, let's remember to point to the directory of our custom theme or plugin and run the npm run start build in order to compile all the CSS and JavaScript and all the source code that we need to bundle in order to have our custom block working. So what we did in the previous lesson, we implemented the media upload component. And of course, if we check the edit post page, we have this nice little button with this new area that we just created. And we saw in the previous lesson that if we click background image and it opens the media uploader, we select an image or we upload a new image and click select, nothing actually changes, nothing happens because we don't have a visualization of what type of image we uploaded. We didn't update our custom component in order to handle these newly uploaded image. So let's take care of that right now. Let's open our code editor. And one really simple thing that we can do, we can simply, first of all, update the CT a container which is the uh, div element container that encapsulates our entire custom block, we can just for the sake of this tutorial use a style attribute and just write directly or our custom styles here. So uh, let's use the style attribute and let's open the double curly brackets in order to write some CSS attributes in React and let's use the first um, attribute is background image, which is don't get fooled is not, uh, I know is identical to the name of the variable, the object that we're using to store the background image URL. But this is the actual CSS attribute that it should be written like this in CSS. But as you can see, react doesn't recognize this. So it's a custom uh, um, attribute change slightly um, to be supported by React. It's the same situation that we have here with tag name or on change. You can see we have a camel case writing, so uh, we just have to deal with that. Here we need to specify the URL and a variable, so we can use the backticks in order to write a string, and inside we can print a variable directly by using the dollar sign and the two curly brackets and write our own background image variable, and, and this is the actual variable. Perfect, let's put a comma, then let's specify some um, other attributes just to make it look slightly nicer. So let's use the background size cover and we can use the background position. Uh, let's put it center, just pretty simple, pretty standard. And then we can say the background repeat. We don't want this image to be repeated. So let's specify the no repeat uh, actually inside the single quotes, no repeat attribute. Perfect. Uh, just for sake of consistency, because we saw in the previous lessons, if we have an edit, like a, a visual UI edit to the component inside the edit page, we need to reflect exactly the same style also in the front page when we save the post. Otherwise, uh, WordPress and Gutenberg will not be able to recognize that this is the same block. So let's copy this entire style attribute and let's paste it inside the return value of the save method. So this is the method that prints our custom block inside the front page. And let's just paste everything here. But of course, we need to update something slightly because um, we don't have the background image here, we need to import it from the list of attributes like we're doing here for the title, the body and the title color, we need to import it also from the full list of attributes. Perfect. So now that we did that, let's go back in our administration area. Let's refresh this page. And obviously, because we changed the HTML, this block is not valid anymore. We need to uh, attempt to block recovery if you want, but I don't really trust this. So it's better to remove this and just add a new block and we can use our call to action. Once again, this is the title, we can put it red. And then this is uh, our description. And let's just leave it like that. And then if we select the background image now, something should happen. Ah, the image is not printed. So let's open our console and let's see if we have a problem. Yes, we have a block validation failed for our custom CTA and the content generated by CTA is this content. So something is wrong in our script. 
seems like I have a little typo, of course, is URL and not ULR. So sorry about that. Of course, as you notice, like having small typos here, uh, Gutenberg doesn't really like that. It's not like a simple HTML or PHP. If you have a small typo, maybe it still works, it still renders, but you don't see what you expect to see. Gutenberg completely crashes if you don't respect everything exactly and you don't have any typo whatsoever. So yeah, this is the worst for me, but it's fine. Let's continue. So let's do it again. Let's update this and let's reload this page. And then we upload our background image. Boom, look what we have here. The background image is right in the underneath our custom block. And if we update this and we go check our front page and we refresh, it's gonna be also here because as we did before in the save, module here we set the background image url and style position and everything else as an inline style attribute of the cta container of course you could have the cta container as a custom css that has all these background repeat position blah 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 and just have the background style as um uh, background image URL, but it's very, it's just flavor, so you can change it however you want. Another thing that I want to do here, I want to improve how we handle this image inside this block, because of course here, uh, yes, the image is uploaded, but the text is not really readable. I know you could change the text to white to make it more readable if your background image is dark, or you could make it black if your background image is uh, more white, but uh, it doesn't really work. Like, it's not great for the user to uh, needing to fiddle with the colors of the test in order to make this readable. We should offer an option to handle an overlay uh, layout on top of this. And that's what I want to do. I want to create a custom overlay that sits on top of the background image, but sits below the text where you can or we can allow the user to control the color of that overlay and the opacity with a built-in slider option. So let's do it. First of all, let's scroll all the way to the top where we are defining our custom objects and right after the background image, we can specify another couple of uh, custom objects. So the first one, I want to call it overlay color. And also this one is basically going to be identical to uh, how we define the background image. We need a couple of attributes. So the first one is the type, what type of data we want to accept inside this object. And I want just strings, so just color strings basically, and we can set also a default attribute in order to you know, start with uh, a simple blank overlay that could be just a regular color. In my case, it's going to be black. You can also define the numerical hash of the color, RGBA. It's totally up to you. Just starting with a simple black is totally fine. And then I want to define another custom object that is going to be the overlay opacity. And this will allow the user to control the intensity, the opacity of the overlay uh, color. And I'm going to give it a type of a number. So just going to accept in numbers, not strings. And the default value of this, I want to give it a 0 0.3 uh, opacity value, something like that. Pretty simple. Perfect. Now we need to do exactly the same things that we did before and we just need to repeat them. So let's copy these two new objects that we created and let's import it as constant variable inside the edit method. So we can put it here and then put a comma. So now we're importing the overlay color and overlay opacity. And once again, we need to specify some functions in order to update those value whenever the user changes those value or interact with those values in our custom block. So we can just scroll down here and create a new function call uh, on overlay color change. We can expect the new color value from this method. And here, once again, we need to use the set attributes method and pass inside the regular brackets and then curly brackets. We need to update the variable overlay color. It's going to be updated with the new color variable that we're grabbing from this very own method. Perfect. And now we need to duplicate this entire method and instead of on overlay color change, we can say on overlay. Dun dun. Let's copy this opacity. 
change. So now what we need to do, we need to uh, create a new section in order to handle this overlay. And we're going to put this new section or actually this uh, new controller inside the background image settings panel body because of course this reflects the settings of handling the image so it should be all in the same panel body. So right after the closing tag of the media upload, uh, we can um, write something custom. So we can um, maybe wrap everything around a div in order to uh, separate properly the two sections and we can set a uh, inline style to this div. Of course, once again, you can change it however you want. You can style it however you want, even with classes. But for now, just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm doing something super quickly just to not write too much custom things. So I'm going to define a margin top and a margin bottom of these elements just to give it a little bit of spacing. So I'm going to have a margin top of 20 pixel, margin bottom of 40 pixels. So it's pretty nicely well aligned and defined. And then we can uh, specify a title like we did before. We use the paragraph value and here we can change title of this section. We just uh, overlay color, something pretty simple and let's leave the semicolon at the end. And now we can use uh, once again the color palette. We're using already the color palette element so we don't need to import it again. We can just like copy it and duplicate it here. But of course we can change a little bit of values. So the color palette that we're using here now is going to handle instead of the title color is going to handle the overlay color. And we can change this to overlay and the method on change then it's going to call it is not the on title color, but of course is the on overlay color change. And then another thing that I want to allow the user to change is of course uh, the opacity and to handle the opacity, I don't want to let the user write manually a value from 100 to zero, from zero to one with all the decimals. But I want to once again use a built-in component of Gutenberg in order to offer the user a range, just like a slider that can slide with a preset amount of steps that I want to allow the user to have. So in this case, we're going to use use a new component called range control. And the range control, once again, needs to be imported from the WP component. So let's copy these. Let's scroll all the way up where we're defining our panel body and icon button imported from the WP components. Let's also import the range control. Perfect. Let's scroll all the way back once again where we're writing our range control. And here this one can self close because it's fine. We don't need to write anything inside here, but we need to define a bunch of things. So first of all, we need to define the label. And once again, the label needs to be inside curly brackets and single quotes has to be an overlay opacity, something like that. So we're ref we're referencing these or we call this color overlay color. So here we need to let the user know that with this range, you can control the overlay opacity. Then the value that we want to have here, it's of course the overlay opacity object that we specified before. And then on change, once again, we need to specify the method that we want to call on change. And let's call exactly this one on overlay opacity change. Perfect. And then the range control gives us the ability to specify a minimum value, a maximum value and a step. Minimum value is going to be, of course, zero. A maximum value is going to be, of course, one. So that's how the opacity works in CSS. And then the step that we want to allow the user to increase or decrease when it slides the slider, when it interacts with the slider is going to be a zero point, let's say zero five step. I think it's a good range to handle this. Perfect. Now, if we save this and we go back in our administration era, we update and we refresh this page, we didn't change anything of the structure of the component. So we don't need, it's not going to break. It's not going to fall apart. We don't need to rebuild it. But as you can see here, we have some new options. We have an overlay color option in the background image settings 
panel body that we defined where you can select some colors. Uh, you can open the custom colors as usual, but also we have an overlay opacity with the range control. And you can see here, this is perfectly styled to reflect the style of WordPress because we use a built-in element, built-in component. And when you increase or decrease, you can see how the value changes and respects the range. So it goes from seven to six, five to six, five, five, three. So it's a very restricted range that we set here. We can change it, of course, if we don't like it. So we can give the user more flexibility to a 0 0.01. Um, this is going to be like pretty good. So if this page reload, yeah, this is kind of more natural if you want, but it's totally up to you. And you can see we can control from zero to one, which is perfect. That's exactly what we wanted. Amazing. Now what we have to do, we need to implement these overlay as a custom element, as a div on top of the image, and then um, make these div be controllable, the color uh, with the overlay color and the overlay opacity with this range. So why don't you do it for before the next lesson? Uh, it's going to be pretty much identical to how we handle the background image. You just have to create a custom div that has a position absolute or fixed on top of the background image. Image. the color is controlled by this panel and the overlay opacity is controlled by this value. So it's pretty standard thing. You should be able as of today, as of right now of this like tutorial number eight to do this thing all by yourself. And remember to do it at the same time for the block and the front end. So for the edit method and the save method. Of course, don't worry if you don't know how to do it. We're going to do it together in the next lesson super quickly before starting implementing extra things. So that's pretty much it for this lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel. And until the next one, as usual, happy coding.